Good morning. This is James Spencer from the Actors Studio. Today, I want to talk about tips for teen actors. Now, these tips are also applicable to any actor, but specifically at my actor studio, I tend to work mostly with teen actors that are breaking into a professional career in the business. And they always come to me and they go, uh, Jim, you know, what do I need to be doing uh, on a daily basis that is going to up my chances to start getting hired for movies and commercials and television spots. And I put together my top 10 uh, things to do. Okay, now, what's really interesting is a lot of times that, you know, it's, it's interesting, I've been looking all over the internet and um, YouTube and things, and they people uh, or teachers rarely talk about this. Uh, in detail and I think that's so sad because it's more to being an actor than just being a good actor uh, and I'm gonna go into that today you, you know so number one uh, is that you have to develop discipline and what I mean by discipline is that you know are you organized do you have an actor's workspace in your home you know, are you ready with pencils and highlighters and three ring binders for your scripts and a, uh, you know, a really good printer? Do you have a good computer where you could find monologues and, you know, things uh, quickly when you need to? Um, do you understand how your email works? And can you, like if an agent sending you a script, can you get that and print that out quickly and be ready to go? So organization skills is number one. Uh, to you know to make sure you're ready to go okay in addition to uh, your organization sk skills you need discipline so that means you know do you stay out late at night and party or you know do you get up every day early and start practicing your acting are you practicing your acting uh, diligently every single day for two hours at the bare minimum you know are you really working on your craft or are you saying, oh yeah, I want to be an actor, and then you know you're out uh, playing video games, or you're not working on your craft? This industry, I want to be very honest, is a difficult industry. You have to give a hundred percent. If you do, you will get great results. But you know, it's a difference between uh, mature teens that understand that this is a business. And kids are like, oh, it'd be cool to be a superstar. I'd like to be like Leo DiCaprio someday or whoever. You know, I think that would be really cool. Well, yeah, that would be great, you know, but it's also like it takes work to get there. So you got to develop discipline. In developing discipline, too, this means if you're a teenager, it really helps to have your whole family on board. If you are a teen that doesn't drive yet and you don't have a car, you're going to have to work with your family or other actors to find carpools or how you're going to get to you know, an audition. Or if you're filming, how is that going to work around your schooling? And this might mean as a family, you have to make uh, decisions. Like many of my students get to that point and they're like, you know what, public high school is not working for me anymore. Maybe I need to do homeschooling, which frees me up to do more acting. There's things you might have to discuss with your family. Um, with some families, uh, there's more than one uh, you know, sibling that's in acting. So sometimes if you have an older brother or older sister, you can, you know, again, carpool or you can take acting classes together or things like that. So it's about getting into a disciplined routine that works for you. And discipline also means the body. Are you eating right? Do you eat a lot of junk food and go out for fast food? And do you have a lot of pimples and do you not look good? Or are you eating, you know, organic plant-based diet and drinking lots of water and exercising every day and getting to sleep on time and avoiding smoke and avoiding alcohol and avoiding stupid things like doing recreational drugs? You know, are you really on it, um, taking care of yourself the best you can? And, de and developing discipline also means developing your mental state. Do you tend to be super positive 
and optimistic and you say like i'm excited about this industry and my life is gonna move to wonderful places or are you like you know god you know this is hard and everybody's better than me and why should i try and oh god i went to another audition and complaining if you complain you're never going to make it so we all have dispositions uh, that are difficult for us and if you happen to be someone who complains then you have to work on that if you're someone who gets stage fright you have to work on that okay this is what's meant by developing discipline and uh, a discipline also means the ability to have a team of people that support you not only your acting coach and artist developer but your agent your uh, high school drama coaches your your friends that are in acting uh, your photographer for headshots this, you got to develop your team and that means discipline in doing that like if you're just starting out and you don't know anybody you can't just say oh well I don't know anybody you know you have to be like okay what am I gonna do today okay I need to go meet with an agent or I need to you know work with my acting coach on developing my network uh, I need to develop a, a online following uh, things like that okay so developing discipline and there's a lot of areas to that and you know I just mentioned several so that's the place to get started I hope you're taking notes okay so that's another thing about discipline are you just sitting here watching this video while you're talking on your cell phone and you know chatting with someone or are you sitting here with your notebook and your pencil and are you taking notes and are you reviewing them are you highlighting points that you got to remember to do um, are you keeping a, a date of when you watch this video and did you watch all my videos or did you just watch one and like oh, okay I think I know things no that's cocky it's about you know not only watch all my videos there's a lot of other great uh, YouTube uh, videos out there and there's there's tasks that your teachers will be giving you to do are you doing them um, you know um, one indication or how are your grades in school are you a 4.0 student or are you just barely getting by if you're just barely getting by you're not organized you're you know if you have a learning disability don't let that um, hurt you like if you're dyslexic or you have something that's a challenge or if you got ADD work on it say okay I have to overcome this but instead of being defeatist you know you can learn like I have a student right now who had very severe dyslexia who is doing very well because we just had to work as a team to see how this uh, actress processes and she needs to do some things a little bit differently in how she approaches her her day you know and so it doesn't matter you know it, it, you know where you're coming from where you're starting from um, I have a lot of people uh, from different types of walks of life I have some students that are actors from incredibly wealthy families that have a lot of advantages but I also have a lot of actors from incredibly poor families and because of that they say okay well maybe you know with the money it's going to take to get started in acting there's things that we need to do as a family and I'm going to take a second job or I'm going to start you know looking for free courses and scholarships and things you you can always solve problems if you're disciplined okay so that's super important so that's number one okay I know I spent a lot of time just you know a good eight minutes just talking about number one but that's important number two is in addition to developing your acting skills you have to develop your people skills and communication skills because you could be an incredible actor or actress but if you can't go in and you know be super bubbly and friendly and talk to your agent or talk to your teachers uh, nobody was going to want to work with you so developing people skills communication skills super important if I'm your um, director and I'm looking at two potential actors or actresses for a part I might sit you down after the initial acting uh, audition process and say tell me about your life you know how, how long have you been in acting and if you're just sitting there going well you know acting's kind of cool I think next you know it's like oh hi you know I'm James Spencer I've been you know studying acting with this coach I'm working with my artist developer hey I just put up my website I'm really excited about that just got some new headshots um I just booked uh, you know a play and while I'm doing that I'm also studying musical theater I'm working on my voice and that's how you want to be you want to be super friendly you're excited you want to be able to communicate super super important to develop 
communication skills. Some people tend to be shy um, or more introverted. I don't mind saying that I'm that way. So when I was a kid and I was learning this, I had to learn to, you know, go to, um, you know, like if I, you know, invited to a mixer, maybe, you know, I'm going to be going to some awards, you know, uh, banquet in the industry and I'm going to be meeting some directors or I'm going to be meeting other actors. Can I just go up with to a complete stranger to start talking like, hi, I'm Jim Spencer. Who are you? And oh, wow, you been, I, I think I saw you in that role. That's really cool. What, you know, or whatever. Can you can you be super bubbly and, and can you uh, communicate properly? That's very, very important. Here's what I've, I've learned too, since I've been teaching for over 30 years, is I find that the newer generations, the Gen Z kids who are growing up with all this technology of being on cell phones all day and you know not really being out there have more trouble with personal skills. My generation before, you know, I'm a Gen X kid, so I was a kid of the 80s, uh, before all of this technology exploded, we were out more. Most of us kids, you know, we had jobs. We, you know, I mean, even if you were super young, if you had a paper route, you were, you know, going door to door, meeting people. People went to church more, so you were interacting with those people. You were, you know, there was, um, you know, there was much more of being out there, so to speak. And nowadays it's much more, especially with COVID. Let's look at the last couple of years here. You know, everybody's been isolated and they're not developing these personal communication skills. So this is where you got to push yourself. If that's what's happening, if you're still in an area where you're in quarantine, you're then you need to, I don't know how to do it. If you're, I mean, meaning if you're, you, you might have to get on Skype or Zoom and start doing classes and talking and practicing your skills and noticing, you know, how you look on a camera and and so forth, okay? So that's the next one is, you know, developing your uh, your um, your communication skills. Third, super important, you must develop professionalism. This can mean uh, many things depending on where you are. If you're just in your home, you know, and you're talking like I am right now just in a t-shirt, that's fine. But if you're out in the actual industry, if you're going to an interview, if you're going to an industry party, if you're going to a premiere, if you're going to a play, you have to dress a certain way and you have to look professional. You have to ask yourself, uh, am I shaven? You know, do I have a, you know, my hair, is my hair right? You know, am I wearing professional looking clothes or do I look like I just came off the street or do I look homeless? A lot of kids nowadays, especially with COVID, and I know it's very difficult to just, you know, like where I live, you can't even go out to a store right now and try clothes on. It's, it's, it's really tricky, you know? So you gotta think about, you know, if I'm going out, do I have um, the right professional look? Am I going to meet with an agent in torn jeans and lots of tattoos and body piercing, piercings and just kind of looking disheveled? Or do, am I going, you know, dressed in a, um, you know, if I'm a guy, am I going with slacks and a blazer, maybe a tie, cleaner? Um, if I, you know, if I'm a girl, am I wearing a nice dress? Um, you know, how's my makeup? Are you doing too much makeup or do you look natural? These are things you got to ask yourself with professionalism. If this is an area that you feel like you're awkward in, this is where there's a lot of people that can teach you. Like you can go to the mall, for example, and go into a higher end store like Bloomingdale's or some, you know, somewhere. And if you're a woman, you could say, okay, please show me day makeup for my face that looks supernatural and they can help point you to products and show you how to apply makeup or here's an evening look and what does that look like? What's your skin tone? I don't care if you're a guy or girl, you need to know there are 12 skin tones. I talk about this in another video and this is gonna be important for headshots as well. You need to know your skin tone and what colors work with you. If you look at me um, right now, um, I have you know jet, kind of a blue black hair. Uh, my eyes are sort of blue green 
and you know I know my skin tone is more of what's called a winter so dark rich colors look good on me like you know the burgundy I'm wearing or black is gonna look good on me of course um, dark purple dark colors but I'm not you know I don't have a lot of like a super amount of, of, of uh, softness to me meaning like I'm not blonde I'm not I don't have a pinkish, uh, pinkish undertone so I'm, I'm not right for spring, spring tones meaning you know like I would never wear pale yellow look terrible on me you know I would never wear certain colors you need to know that you need to know what works for you and for your look and and how to slightly change that up by the way you change your hairstyle or whatever like maybe if you're going out for a part that's a little bit more um, like let's say you're a teenager but you have to look a little bit older like maybe you got to play 21 well maybe you know if you're a girl you, if you have long hair you put your hair up you know, and that makes you look a little more mature or maybe like right now, you know, I have my hair up and away, but I could wear it down and that gives me a different look, you know, um, wearing glasses. I wear glasses, but what if I change the glasses I'm wearing? You know, I have different, sh you know, that can give me a different look or maybe I'm wearing contacts and I'm not going to wear glasses and that's going to give me a different look. And it's about just knowing those subtleties. Okay. So that's where that can be super um, important is your professionalism and how you you know take care of yourself um if you're going in to meet with an agent and they say you know i want to see your see your portfolio well do you have your website can you do you have business cards do you have a black three ring binder with your headshot in the front and your resume on the back are you organized do you look professional or you know do you come in with like a resume all soaked with coffee stains that you just take out of your pocket you know that's not professional you know so you got to really develop professional skills and organizational skills if someone tells you in the industry to do something you need to be ready if someone says please show up at this time with two scripts and your resume and headshots you need to be ready to go and you can't be like oh sorry I forgot my you know I forgot my resume or if they say you know we need uh, your headshots done a certain way we need colored headshots and you show up with black and white headshots that's not correct for the industry right now so those are stored in the trash next you know you have to understand those things okay professionalism organization skills okay let's move on to number four super 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 important you gotta be working with a re uh, respectable and knowledgeable acting coach are you with someone who is really knows the industry are you working with someone who's been in the industry for 30 40 years that have degrees that have successful students they can show you that can that they can go okay here's my students here's their portfolios online these are the things they're booking or are you working with someone who's like just someone down the street that you found and you don't know anything about them you know what I mean did you do your research and finding the right acting coach or if you're you know might be you know an acting studio if you're going into an acting studio you know ask yourself what is their success rate who went to that acting studio if you have an opportunity as a team to go to an acting conservatory um, I have a lot m many of my students belong to one of the very best here in California is called uh, OSHA the Orange County High School of the Arts and a lot of famous people went there you know uh, Matthew Morrison from Glee and you know a lot of famous actors and it's got a very good reputation for for being you know a great Academy where those kids study you know the regular subjects but they're really working on their acting and they have opportunities for musical theater and they have recording studios and they're working with the kids on the business well that if you want to be in the industry that makes more sense to be in, a, in one of those type of schools or maybe it's like again being in a home school and then freeing yourself up to work with your acting coach and a good acting coach is also what's called an artist developer that's what I do so all my students that I'm working with I'm not only teaching you acting I'm teaching you the business of acting you must know the business you could be an incredible actor but if you don't understand business you'll never make it okay so business can mean all, so many different things you know business uh, can mean do you know how to do proper industry headshots do you know how to do your reels do you know how to take your industry monologue your, your dramatic and comedic reels and upload them to YouTube and start creating a YouTube following do you know how to brand yourself do you know how to do a website is your website coherent meaning that, that, that do the, the look of your website represent you as an artist
And is everything working as a unit or is there a disconnect? Um, do you know how to find an agent? Once you find an agent, do you know what to do? What are other things you need to be doing in addition to working on your acting? What special skills are you developing? Um, what other things do you know are you doing? Are you studying dialects every day? You know, there's so much to this and you have to a good acting coach can help you say Okay, this is what you're weak on and this is what we're gonna work on Okay, and they can help you get organized. They can help you come up with um, a timeline That's really good to have too. like, okay I'm working on my dramatic monologues for my portfolio. and We're gonna do that over a two to three month period and you know go from there um, and so forth okay so very 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 important you have to be with a great acting coach and artist developer one thing I get tired of hearing is oh my god that's gonna cost me money oh it's hard it's expensive well of course yes you want you want skills you have to invest in yourself so if that means that you know you have to work as a as a family to um, you know save up money for that um, you and you want this and maybe your family's like well you know we have parents are like we have four kids we can't give you a hundred you know hundred percent money towards this then maybe you have to go out and get a job maybe you have to sacrifice maybe you have to find scholarships maybe you have to find alternatives you know and, and I've had it's amazing because my students that come from poorer families and you know they have to make it work and they want it really bad they're the ones that are the most committed I find that so interesting so I have one kid who I'm just so proud of because she's working two jobs and she's found scholarships and she's like I'm gonna do whatever it takes to make it and then I have wealthy families you know I have like one kid who comes from a billionaire's family I mean like every imaginable um, you know things that so many people don't have like the kid you know, I mean this kid's driving it's like uh, unbelievable kids driving a you know a BMW and he's got you know everything at his disposal but because everything's given to him he's just like well you know, I ask him did you do your homework well sorry this week I went to a party well he's not gonna get anywhere then you know and so it's about you have to be uh, you have to work hard you also have to be in gratitude you have to be oh Thank you that I have talent and I love this industry. I'm going to get to do what I love for the rest of my life, where someone else might be have a boring life sitting in an office all day, you know, in a desk job. My life's going to be extraordinary. I'm going to meet extraordinary people. I'm going to travel around the world. People are going to remember my name, and I'm using that line because um, I was on, uh, I had a small role on the show Fame many years ago and you know uh, Debbie Allen uh, who was a main character on that who was the acting and a dance coach on that show she's like you want fame well fame costs and here's where you start paying and sweat and that's where you have to put the time in okay so in addition to having a great acting coach and a good artist developer the next one is never talked about you have to master memorization this is tip five Master your memory. You have to be able to memorize fast. I have a lot more videos you can watch on just memorization alone. But sometimes this is what's going to happen. I'm your agent and I say, hey, tomorrow morning at this time you have to go in and do an audition. And that script's got to be learned. And you and maybe that call came in at nine o'clock at night and you know it's already like you have you know, like just an hour before you have to go to bed and you have to get that whole thing memorized and be out the door at five the next morning to be ready to go to an audition or something. So you have to memorize fast. And if and when you're memorizing, again, if you're organized, like if you have all your scripts and, and your binder and you have your pencil and your highlighter, which you will always see on my desk, and things like that ready to go, you're ready to work and you can dig in and dig in effectively instead of being disorganized. Memorization, 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 memorization. Okay, I say that and my students get tired. Oh, Mr. Spencer said memorization again, you know. And you know what? The ones that listen to me and memorize are the ones that book all the time consistently. Because they can go in like, what do you need from me? Yeah, I'm ready to go. Sure, I have it all. I'm ready to go. And if you show up at an audition, you're like, oh, God, I'm sorry. I have to get my script out. I forgot my lines. Next, you're not professional. A professional actor can be under pressure and be ready to go on the spot. They can memorize very quickly. Not only have they memorized, memorization also includes character analysis. Did you take the time, and I have a lot of videos on that, like to 
why is the character saying what he's saying? What's going on in the scene? What is he emotionally feeling? What is the body language? How do you present yourself as that character? How loud or soft are they? All those questions you have to solve before you go into your audition. Okay, so you have to be quick and you have to understand what I call the actor's process and that's super important. Okay, so let's go on. Um, one, uh, in addition to being able to memorize, you have to master sight reading. You have to be a good reader. You have to understand reading comprehension. And that means can you read something but read it correctly? Or are you stumbling like a second grader on words and going, uh professionalism what you know I mean, no you can't do that you can't have your head buried in a script you know you have to be able to communicate articulate and be fluid so this means I don't care how good you are at reading comprehension and sight reading you can always get better and that means you should always be developing your vocabulary your vocabulary you should know every damn word in the dictionary Okay, yes. And you're like, like, well, that's going to take forever. There are tricks. This is the unfortunate thing. Nowadays, um, you know, I feel we completely digress in how uh, high schools teach uh, English. One thing that, you know, most English teachers do not do anymore is they don't teach etymology. Now, if you've never heard that word, etymology means the roots, usually Greek or Latin roots of words. Okay, and if you understand the roots, you can figure out very difficult words. I was very fortunate. I had the very best English teacher, in my opinion, in California. Her name is Linda Carpenter, and she taught at Edison High School in Huntington Beach, and that's where I went. And I actually had the privilege of going to school with a lot of other famous child actors. I went to school with Nicole Eggert, who was on Baywatch. I went to school with Willie Ames, who was on Charles in Charge. I went to school, uh, school with Melissa Fawn, who actually lived across the street from me. And Melissa Fawn is one of the top voiceover actresses right now in the world as she's done uh, tons of anime and Hello Kitty and Betty Boop and she was on Broadway she took over for Christian Chenoweth in Wicked you know she you know so I was around all these amazing people and you know we studied etymology so let me give you an example um, there are roots for words so here's 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 like I want to give you like four roots and show you how many words you can pull from this so Cali C A L I that root means beautiful and the opposite Kako C A C O means ugly graph means writing phone means sound so let's put some of the and here's here's a funny one pigeon p y g i a n means your butt okay so calligraphy cali beautiful graphy writing beautiful writing calligraphy cacography ugly writing illegible handwriting you see how you can start figuring out things cacophony noise ugly sounds calipigian nice ass okay you know i mean you can have fun with this you know and you know you might be reading a script and a difficult word comes up um and you want to be able to circle that word and have a vocabulary um sheet that if you don't know the word you write it down so that way if you're you know you understand what you're saying too. Uh, here's an example that happened just recently. I had a student that brought in a script for a play and the word was vociferous and the kid's like, I have no clue what that means. Look it up. I wasn't going to just give him the words. Look it up. It says, oh, it means, you know, talking with a lot of energy, talking loudly. Right. Right. Good. So then what's happening in the scene? Oh, okay. I get the scene now. So the kid is in class. And, you know, the teacher says, you know, talk more vociferously and, and the kid needs to know that he, that means to talk louder or whatever. Now he's got a better understanding of the scene and he can pronounce the word correctly. Here's another thing. In addition to your vocabulary, what if you're in the middle of a script 
and you're dealing with a foreign language or you're dealing with a dialect. Maybe the script is written in a di dialect. Um, I had a, a boy one time working on playing Huckleberry Finn for a play and he didn't understand and I had to explain to him where he saw P-O-P-O, -O, pull. And I said, that's in the South, they leave off the R. So if you're, they, instead of saying, I'm a poor boy, you say, I'm a poor boy. You know, and that's a dialect. I had to explain that to him. But if you don't understand that, then you ask. You work with your coach, you know. So you might have a dialect. Another thing you might have is just a word in a foreign language that you don't know how to pronounce. One that I literally spit out my tea. I was I was actually directing, I used to direct uh, musicals for high schools. And we were doing Les Miserables. And a kid came and he and I said, well, okay, what part are you reading for? I'm reading for the part of Val, you know, Val, uh, Jean Valjean. And I'm like, oh my God, Jean Valjean, you know, and I had, and, you know, I was just like, next, the kid doesn't know what he's doing. You know, I didn't, you know, I didn't even look at him. I just like, thank you, you know, because this is what you need to know. Okay. You have to be prepared. So it might mean if you don't know a vocabulary word or something, then you have to go out and you have to do some research. You have to go on the internet and look some things up. Okay, so that was number seven, expanding your vocabulary. Number eight is you need to complete before you even get out there your actor's portfolio. So an actor portfolio means correct headshots and I have specific things. Don't just spend money and get headshots. Study how to do headshots before you do this. And there's a lot there. I have, I'm gonna have like a good three to four videos just on headshots, so you're gonna watch them, okay? In addition to headshots, you're gonna need your video reels. So do you have your monologues up, You know your dramatic monologues, your comedic monologues? dialects are those put together do you have a resume what do you have on the resume <sighs> who have you studied with you know what is your education all this stuff you have to start compiling do you have a website is the website done to industry standards okay does the website connect into your social media do you have a YouTube following do you have a Facebook actors page are you on Instagram? You know, there's all these things that we're going to be working on, and you have to do that. You know, and if I'm an agent, I might say, you know, show me your website, show me your portfolio, and I should be able to just press a button, and you should pop up, and it should look professional. And so those are things you're going to be working on, and of course that requires time and money. So if you're a family, and, and it's going to take like you know anywhere from three hundred dollars to more, it could be a thousand or two thousand for headshots or things you need, then you got to plan for that. And are you planning for that strategically? Are you know are you wasting money like if you you know on things you don't need to be, or are you saving and and you know when you start working, are you taking twenty percent of what you make and reinvesting it back into your acting career, or like oh well I made a thousand dollars in a commercial and then you spend the money the next day and go party, it's not smart okay so it's about um, you know it's about uh, really working towards the things you need so an actor's portfolio is going to be super important. Um, then you're ready to meet uh, and book with the agent. So now it's about getting out there. You're going to have a lot of what are called go sees. That's where uh, you know different acting agents do different things. Sometimes you can just you know you're going to have to start learning that. So you know when you don't have an agent, you should have a um, address book, or a, and you should be like, let me go online. You know, agents in Long Beach, California, for actors actors that you know agents that work with teens or whatever and you start you know logging their websites and their phone numbers and you know what times to call and they might say on their website hey are you new are you a new actor would you like to to submit to us this is the process and you go to that page and they say okay we want to see you know fill out this application you know we want a link to your your website you know this is the procedure um, with the better agents you know the very best you have to be invited in or you have to be referred in by someone like myself like an you know an artist developer that that is connected with the larger agencies you know and so forth and um, and you know there's a lot that goes into this and it's a process and so I have a lot of students that are great actors and they maybe book one commercial and they think everything's great you know starting off perfectly and then all of a sudden they can't book anything or they, they can't, you know they're trying for six months to get an agent 
and you know it takes time and you can't give up and while you're waiting for an agent you can still do other things you can do community theater and you could be working on developing other skills like I have many actors that are teenagers that are also models or they're doing musical theater or they're also dancers and they're doing other things um, you know they go or they're doing research like I have a lot of kids that are like I you know when I'm older I want to you know be an actor in a Disneyland show or, or work for Disney I did that you know but when I was 14 15 I wasn't even driving yet I got in you know I saved up money from my acting uh, gigs and things and I got an annual pass to Disneyland and I was going to Disneyland every weekend and you know what you know getting to know the actors in the shows and talking with how did you do it and taking notes I would go into Disneyland with a notebook and I take notes and you know I would say okay how did you book that part and who is your agent and you know trial and error you know um and different agencies want different things you know too or different looks um i was also in a rock band i'm a musician so in the 80s uh you know i was looking kind of you know i was a little bit of a goth kid i was in a band and i had you know blue hair and things like that and that's appropriate for edgier roles so that would book me certain things but it wouldn't book me disney so then when i went into disney i had to be super clean cut and i had to go back to my natural hair color which believe it's not black my natural hair color is more reddish and i had to you know be super more conservative and wear polo shirts and look a certain way for disney you know and every every different agency wants different thing so you got to think about what's the best for me and where I want to go and those are other things you got to talk about you know how you present yourself and so forth um, so meeting uh, and booking with agents is going to be super important and the last thing is you got to be developing other skills outside of acting so are you are you practicing your voice are you studying singing are you doing musical theater are you taking dance classes are you studying dialects? Are you studying languages if you're in high school outside of English so you can become bilingual or trilingual? Um, you know, are you studying the business? Are you learning about uh, how to design websites, you know, with web builders? Um, are you learning um, additional skills? If you have stage fright, are you working on getting over that? Um, if you have mental blocks, there's, there's books I can recommend. One book I really love uh, for really empowering you to be a great success is called The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron. And um, I, again, The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron. I actually worked with Julia personally. And it's basically about breaking you know, through all your mental blocks and you do a lot of journaling and getting in touch with your emotions and you know, finding out you know, where, you know, are you around people that sabotage you and don't believe in you or are you, you know, developing you know, nurturing relationships that will help you get where you want to go. That's one thing the book talks about. You know, are you organized? You know, the book talks a lot about that, which is one of the first ones you know, we talked about for tips. Um, you know, do you have a vision board? You know, are you really, you know, got, you know, like I know exactly where I want to go and you're, you know, are you positive? Are you in gratitude? Or are you a complainer? You know, do, do you get, do you get frustrated if you don't get a part? Or do you bounce back quickly and get right back in the game? You know, there's all these things that will help you to become a successful actor or actress. So study these 10 points over and over work with your coaches on that or if you are somewhere in the u.s and you're getting started and you want you know really uh great coaching and you want coaching uh that's going to get you where you want to go then you know my website's at the end and you can contact me um i either i or my team of acting coaches and other people uh, do work uh, with students online all through the US and again specifically we work with teens so if you happen to be a teen you know uh, have your parents contact me and we can get started and so forth thank you so much for your time and watching this video I wish all of you the greatest success and I will see you next time at the after studio thank you so much